All right, so I'm going to pick up where we left off after class, and um, I just started, we were working on this chocolate lab, and we had um, started getting this ear filled in. So I'm going to pick up there and continue working on it. I'm uh, picking up the Prismacolor Dark Brown right now, and i um, just going to start kind of adjusting some of the tones. I'm working now from where in class I had been working from this printout. Um, and you can see the printout is pretty red in here, but when I look at the actual image itself, um, the digital image, um, it's it's got it's it's quite a bit different in its coloring. So I want to correct out some of this red that I've got. I prefer to work from the digital image. I feel like its color is more accurate. Um, so um, the start that I have is uh, has a lot more of this warmth in it. Um, you can see the colors are a lot closer, but I want to correct and get it closer to what the actual digital image shows. So I'm going to go back in and start working on fixing some of that so it's a little closer. So I'm just going in with some of the Prismacolor Dark Brown. And working on building up my values, my darks in here. See, I kind of want to cool this off a little bit, and so the um, best way to cool it off is to use a complementary color. And so the brown, right now it's fairly warm, so if I used a little bit of green, that might cool it down some, but I'm going to have to use like a really, really light touch because I don't want it to turn out green. So I'm, I'm back on the barrel. I'm using a very light touch. This is the apple green from the Prismacolor. You can see I have a very dull point, <clears throat> which I'm fine with because I don't want any of this actual green to show up. I want just enough to tone down the warmth in the colors that I currently have down. Okay, and I think that worked pretty well for what I'm looking for. I'm going to blend it a little bit with my blending stub. I definitely don't want anyone to look at this and see the green in there. All I want is just enough green to influence what the other colors underneath are doing. Okay, that seemed to work pretty well. So now I want to go in, I think, with, let's see, I'm going to go in with some of the Polychromos White and a decent point on there, not a super sharp one, but I want to start putting in some little light flecks of hair in here. You want to make sure that you're doing this randomly, that it's not, um, you know, the same length, the same, you know, like it's all in a row type of thing. You you want to spread it out and be a little bit sporadic um, so it looks more natural than if you just did like this rigid row of little hair strokes. And I'm pressing a little bit hard just to kind of get that white to show up a little bit. And then I'm going to go in with some of the polychromos, uh, what is this, burnt ochre. And I want to sharpen this. The tip is a little bit rounded. So I'm going to sharpen this. i got a pretty nice tip on there now. And I'm going to go in over some of those white strokes and just put a little bit of this burnt ochre on there. And then I'm going to take the polychromos black, sharpen it up just a little bit. A little bit. And 
and put in some darks, some dark hair strokes in here. And this is where the hardness of the um, polychromos really just shine. Um, it helps you put in those little details towards the end that make such a difference in your overall drawing. I'm going to go back in with some of the walnut brown. I'm going to sharpen this, get a nice point on it. All right, that's looking a little better. And now I'm going to start bringing the walnut brown down a little bit further where I had worked out more. I was kind of color correcting this little area right here, but now I'm going to start bringing, working down a little bit further on the ear. Really paying attention to um, my reference photo and what's happening there. If you hear the patter of little feet, it's my my puppy running around, being a crazy little girl, tearing up my sock, I see. That's not very nice. <laughs> she doesn't care. Okay, I'm gonna come in also with some of this um, ultra, light ultramarine. And this will just kind of help cool things down so it doesn't get too warm again. And I'm just putting some light strokes. Just kind of using this to actually just blend in. I'm not doing specific like hair strokes right now. I'm just kind of filling in the spaces between the uh, burnt ochre with this light ultramarine to keep things from getting too warm. And as it comes down along here, it gets pretty light. I'm going to put down some more Prismacolor white here. I'll just put down a nice thick layer. I'll brush away my crumbs. And then I'm going to use the Prismacolor uh, dark brown. I'm going to put a better point on this though because I want to be careful about being precise where I'm putting my marks right now. Um, let's see. So I'm just going to do some little hair strokes. Now where I'm working right now is this section right here. Okay, so I want to be careful just to do little hair strokes in there. Um, and not get too carried away and fill it all in with, with the brown. I do want it a little bit darker in a couple spots up here. And remember to go in the direction that the hair is going in. I fill in a little bit more up here. Get our boy looking nice and chocolatey up here. A little bit more of the light ultramarine from the polychromos. I 
such a balancing act between the warms and the cools here. Okay, so now I'm gonna start working on this part right here. I'm not done with this, but I kind of wanna build this out a little bit more before I do all of this down here. So I'm going to put a layer of Prismacolor white down, nice thick layer. I'm just coming all around this curve right here. Okay. Okay, so then I'm going to go in with the dark brown and start laying down some color. Not being as careful with the direction of the hair right now because I'm going to end up blending this. I'm just working for the color right now, not for texture. This section down here gets pretty dark. And I'm going to bring, I'm going to bring the light um, ultramarine blue from the um, polychromos in. Um, even though I really would rather have this color and the Prisma color at this point, the true blue and the Prisma color is just um, going to be too harsh of a color. Um, where the light ultramarine is really close to what I want. So even though it's not as waxy as I'd like right now, um, it's the color I want, so I'm gonna go ahead and use it. Okay, and then I think, let's see. I think I'm gonna do a little bit of Prismacolor Black in here. some of the just a light touch a little heavier in some of the areas where it's a little darker okay and I'm gonna blend this out again with my white prisma color I don't want it to get too light, so I'm going to use a blending stump and put a little more pressure in with the blending stump. Blend back some of this area up here as well. So now when you compare the two, it's a decent base here for me to start building in darks and lights. This is kind of like, it's a little lighter than the mid-tone of, of what's happening on the ear here, um, but that's good because it keeps my lights preserved so now I can build up from there, okay? <clears throat> so I'm gonna go in with the Walnut Brown from my Polychromos and just start here up towards the top. It's kind of a little dark couple like little shadows uh, where the hair's uh, kind of knocked back a little bit or something like a little dark spot. Just start putting in some of the, the texture that I see here in the photo.
and you hear that noise of my pencil hitting the paper um, this is the that's the noise you want to be looking for you want to make sure that you're getting that noise as well that's the the tip of my pencil um, as I lift it and I put it back down on the paper it makes that noise now if I were just kind of going back and forth without um, worrying about texture it would sound like this but that's not what I want I want individual hair so it needs to have this tapping cadence so you're you're not just scribbling back and forth but you're thinking about where the hairs are and how you're placing your pencil point down and it's not going back and forth it's going in one direction because the hair is going in one direction right And maybe every so often you'll hear like a little scribble noise and that's just where I'm trying to put down like a little bit more value a little like a little bit more of the pencil color so that um, like it's a, a darker spot right there or something and so I'm just kind of going over that one spot a couple of times in order to really build up the color there but overall I want little individual strokes um, because this is where I'm, I'm putting in all my efforts towards building the texture of the fur. Uh, let's see, now I'm going to go in with, I think I'm going to do the polychromos white. Um, brush off some of the crumbs. And so I'm going to bring in some white in kind of these little light colored sections that I see. pressing pretty hard with this um, so it will show up brush my crumbs away now I'm gonna grab the light ultramarine I'm gonna sharpen my point I want it really nice and sharp all right and I'm gonna go in with the polychromos light ultramarine here So <clears throat> now I'm going to take some of this burnt ochre and I'm just going to bring a little bit of it over off the edge of the ear. I'm going to do burnt ochre on this side and then I'm going to do the light ultramarine as it comes around over here. And then I'm going to go ahead and take the the polychromos white to blend this out um, because I, I feel like I can just be a little bit more controlled and precise with it than I would be with the um, Prismacolor which is just gonna like just kind of smush everything around and get a little out of hand Okay, so that's kind of helping build up that soft edge of the ear there. Uh, 
Okay, and now it's still not dark enough. So I'm gonna go in with some black. And work on building up some of the value in here. And you can hear that I've switched over to um, scribbling now as I push, as I as I try and um, bring the value up in this really dark area. Because it's really dark, where it's really dark, you can't see the individual hairs. Um, but as it comes out of that, you can see them again. And so then we switch back to doing the individual hairs. Um, and I want to <clears throat> pay special attention to the edge of this ear so that it looks like it's rounded. I've got just a little bit of extra value, a little bit darker here on this edge. And I want this um, to be kind of faded uh, over to the lighter area to, to kind of gradually go over to where it's lighter so it looks like the um, the ear or the edge of the ear has some weight to it. I'm going to take the um, Prismacolor Dark Brown um, in here now because it's a little bit darker than the Polychromos version, uh, the Polychromos Walnut Brown, and this just needs to get needs to get darker, but not black. It needs to be um, more, you know, brown. So I think I need to bring this guy in here to get some more pigment down. do a little blending with my stump here. Okay, and I think that's coming along pretty nicely. So I'm going to start working on this section right here now. So we're going to put a nice thick layer of the Prismacolor white down. Just push that wax into the fibers of the paper. <clears throat> oh, 
Okay, I'm going to start with the Prismacolor Dark Brown and just do like a light layer over the top of the white Prismacolor. It gets a little darker in this section right here and then lighter as it comes down here. I think right here is where I stopped with my white, so. Okay, I'm gonna bring in the Polychromos Light Ultramarine because I, I want that color. The Prismacolor True Blue is just too um, bright of a color and it's not gonna work well in this section, but the Polychromos Light Ultramarine works well. I'm pressing a little harder with the um, with this one than I did with the dark brown uh, because it's this section is more the color of the light ultramarine than it is the brown really because of the shine on the dog's fur. Okay, I'm going to use my blending stump. To kind of squish that together and burnish it to mix the colors. I'm going to blend it up into this section along the top of the ear too just to kind of connect all that together and here as well these colors are really similar and so I'm going to blend them so the transition is nice and smooth. Okay, let's see. So I'm gonna go back in with a little bit more of the Prismacolor Dark Brown. going to take, I think, let's see, a little bit of the Polychromos Burnt Ochre um, up towards the top here. I think I'm going to take some of the Prismacolor Black being very careful to use a light touch Okay, I'm gonna go back in with a little bit more of the Prismacolor White. I do kind of want to get this little edge here um, knocked back pretty white. I'm using a little bit heavier pressure there. Right before the ear flap turns over, um, there's like a little highlight along that edge. And again, that 
that just shows the thickness of the the ear flap um, if you have that if you don't have that little highlight along the edge then it will end up looking like um, like a piece of paper instead of a fold of skin If I had more colors at my disposal, I would probably make some different choices. But since this is what we have, this is going to be one of those like close enough. Um, and this isn't like a focal point of the drawing, so it should be fine. It's just um, the, the colors that we have are really um, make it kind of difficult to get this exactly right. Okay, I'm using my white polychromos to really push that edge, the highlight along that edge of the ear flap. Um, I'm actually almost scraping off the color that's down right now with the point of my pencil. my blending stump just to soften a couple of those spots up a little more I kind of went in there hard with that pencil so pull some of that back okay when I squint at my drawing and squint at my reference photo I can see I'm still not dark enough here and here so <clears throat> Let's go in with some, <clears throat> excuse me, some black Prismacolor. You can really push that in there. And really build up these values. Same with the dark brown Prisma. And then bring in some black polychromos as I move down in this section of the ear and bring out some really defined dark hair strokes. Go back and forth between the dark brown polychrom or prisma color and the black polychromos. Just making sure to get things dark enough. Now you guys can see that like I'm doing a lot of going back and forth and double checking, and like I'm not moving on from the um, this ear, like I, I mean, it's taken me a while to get this done, um, and and it should be taking you a while as well. This isn't you shouldn't be um, halfway across the head at this point. You should still be working on getting the details of the ear correctly before you move on. Colored pencil takes a while.
That's looking better. That's a lot closer to what I want. Okay, so put this back and I'm going to sharpen up my white Prisma color just a little bit. Not too sharp because I'm going to put a lot of pressure on it, um, putting down some more white. And I'm just going to get this last little bit here. So I'm going to take the Prismacolor Dark Brown and just a light little layer. It looks like there's almost a crease right there on my paper. Not sure what that's all about. Let's see if we can fix it. Light layer of the dark brown and the poly or the prism color. Now I'm coming in with the light ultramarine from Polychromos. And this section here, you can hear I'm scribbling now. I'm not doing the specific, you know, little hair strokes, the individual strokes. One, I'm building up color, not worrying about texture so much. But also, um, this section on the dog's ear is, is fairly smooth. There aren't longer hairs. So um, the texture is smooth, so you want smooth texture um, in your drawing as well. And you see how the white, the light ultramarine blue and that dark brown just really work nicely to, to make this kind of warm gray, like a French gray. Okay, it actually gets a little, you know, I think I need to put some white down there first to let that pop out. I'm using the white Prisma color. And then I'm going to put some of the light ultramarine polychromos just in some of these highlight sections here, the, the really lighter light sections on the ear where it's nice and shiny. And then I'm going to go in with some of the um, walnut brown from the polychromos and there's like a warmer brown section or not a warmer brown but like a brown section right here before the um, ear turns over to the other side some of the poly or prisma color sorry um, dark brown in here too and I'm working on getting this edge right here correctly um, it needs to look like this is turning and that this is recessed back here and then like the skin is kind of folding up over this and so um, I have to pay attention that's a soft edge on this side um, or a firm edge, I guess. And so I'm just making sure that I draw that edge correctly so that the shape of the ear reads correctly. I'm going to take some of Prismacolor Black and just come in here gently with a light touch of this. Take my blending stump and soften everything up a little bit. Away. 
it need. Come in here with a little bit of the polychromos black. come in with some of the polychromos white and pull this little lip of highlight out okay so now I'm just going to take my Prismacolor black and instead of putting the white down I'm just going to put a nice thick layer of the Prismacolor black along this ear where it gets so dark underneath because remember we can pick the lightest color that we see but for quite a bit of this, it's just straight black. So that's a good option. That comes up right there. Go in with my blending stump and just kind of smooth things out and really push that pigment into the fibers of the paper. Okay, and you can see like up here it starts. Like some of these little <clears throat> hairs along the edge of the ear go into the shadow as it's um, the skin is folding over. And then down here, this needs to have the white restated. I'm using my polychromos here because I want that really hard pencil. bring this down a little bit more. I'm going to take my walnut brown and bring that over some. Taking my polychromos black and just working on the outside shape of this shadow area down here. some polychromos white
back in with some of the polychromos walnut brown. just finish out this little section right here I'm going to go ahead and use white here even though it's pretty dark it's a pretty dark area use white and then some of the Prismacolor dark brown I'm going to use some of the light ultramarine blue from the polychromos again. And another layer of the dark brown. And some of the Prismacolor black here. And then I want it to stay fairly dark, so I'm going to use my blending stump instead of my white pencil to mix it all. And let's bring my dark brown Prisma color back in. And so there is quite a bit of texture in the fur right here. And so I'm going back to that tap, tap, tap thing. I'm going to use some of the walnut brown from the polychromos now. And I'm going to use some of the white polychromos just to bring some of the, the lighter strands in. Be really you know, really pay attention when you're putting these strokes down um, because you really want them to stand out, but you want them to stand out nicely. Um, so pay attention to the direction and, you know, make sure that they're random, not too uniform. Let's see, I think I want some black instead. use some of the um, burnt ochre from the polychromos and just get some of these lighter hairs in here yeah that looks pretty nice I like that Uh, 
Okay, and when I squint at my drawing and I squint at my reference photo, I'm mostly happy with what I'm seeing. I can get a little darker still coming down here. Pressing pretty darn hard. Okay, so I think that's pretty good for right now. Oops, come back the right way, please. What are you doing? Okay, <laughs> my iPad is not wanting to cooperate. So, not too bad, it's not perfect, but uh. I'm getting too blue, I think. Um, it's not too bad. So I'm going to stop for now, and then we'll come back and we'll do more later.